there's something in every one of you that waits and listens for the sound of the genuine in yourself. It's the only true guide you will ever have. And if you cannot hear it, you'll spend all of your days on the ends of strings that somebody else pulls. This ancient trail wanders along through relentless weather with 6,000 meter giants touching the sky above. Everything we've heard of this place, everything we've read, nothing could prepare us. This is all a spur of the moment idea, part of the vicious cycle of making every adventure more thrilling than the last. Our goal is to circumnavigate the Waiwash range in the Peruvian Andes, perhaps disproportionate to anything the three of us had ever done. After several blurred days of travel from Colorado, we dialed in the gear, built up the bikes, and were stoked to ride. With our wheels set in motion, we made some final preparations before going out on our own into the mountains. Uh, we're leaving at 4, 4 a.m. tomorrow morning, and we start our ride. And we're going to ride the Cordillera Waiwash in Peru. The next morning, we made our way to the outskirts of the range. Local skeptics watched our every move as we slipped out of the town of Chican, and rightfully so, as only one other group had ever attempted this journey on bicycles. The typical method is to trek the route, fully supported with gear-touting donkeys and local guides. The fact that it was the rainy season only instilled more doubt. These are the biggest mountains I've ever seen. <laughs> this is ridiculous. With every pedal stroke, the lines begin to blur between the developed and the wilderness. Warm smiles and curiosity greeted us as we climbed through the village of Yamak, the entrance to the Waiwash. Here we were introduced to the peaceful nature of these mountains, and with that, we were off. Got our first view of the glaciers up here in the Wairosh range, and we're heading up to Matacancha Pass, which is just up there in the clouds, so it's uh, about to get foggy. Yeah. It's putting the horsepower down on us. Literally. <laughs> one word, Thomas, one word. Yeah. Starting our first big climb. Definitely hike a bike. There's no riding up this. We're about halfway up Kwakwanan Pass. We got maybe close to a thousand more feet of vert to climb. And then it's descent down to camp for the night. A little short of our goal, but so be it. Gonna have to make the time up in the next couple days.
filthy and exhausted. Somehow we had forgotten the day's struggles, the rain, the elevation. We've come alive in the mountains and there's nowhere else we'd rather be than right here, right now. It's gonna be the start of our third day. We only got one pass to make it over. And at least we're getting an early start. The air was cold and thin, the gear still wet from the day before. Nothing could hinder our enthusiasm for the best single track of our lives in the wildest place we'd ever been. As we charged on, our smiles grew larger. We had never felt so far away. How do you guys feel? That good, huh? Nice. <laughs> We felt small and insignificant when setting up the tent below 6,000 meter peaks. The thundering sound of glaciers cracked as we managed to get some rest. Now let's cook some hash browns. It's raining. We're at 14,000 feet, camping. Third day, Kudia whitewash. Hell yeah. Oh, I don't like this. How to cook in the vestibule, 101. <laughs> Isn't that what they tell you not to do? Yep. The only way to get here is a pass off to my left that we came over yesterday. The only way out is a pass to my right, which is what we're going over today. The fact that we got ourselves here on our bikes, by ourselves, with all our gear, just makes it that much better. Keep climbing higher and higher, but the views just keep getting better. It's all worth it. Sam and I were trying to get him stable, wake him up, and I was about ready to run for the spot beacon. Today is one of those days I never want to have to experience again. Uh, Joey took a pretty good digger up here at the base of this glacier below Sula Grande. Um, we're about three days in either direction from any sort of substantial help, and so we're out here. Um, got a pretty good concussion and knocked himself out for a little bit. And we're just in the tent out of the rain, and we're gonna keep pushing on tomorrow and just try to get out of here. Definitely one of the gnarliest things that's ever happened to me, for sure. The previous day I got the worst concussion I've ever had. It scared the hell out of me, but the only option was to keep going. There was no help to be found out here. After hours and hours of climbing, we made it to the highest point on the loop. Nice analogy for those of you at home. It'd be like pushing a wheelbarrow up a staircase while trying to breathe through a drinking straw. Yes. I think Joey and Sam would agree with me on that one.
seen any people in days, we rounded a corner and were caught a bit off guard. What we thought were two local caballeros turned out to be quite the opposite. Yeah, we ran into those two guys and I, that super drunk guy immediately pointed the gun in my face and it was super sketchy. I've been that scared a long time. He's just pointing his pistol, finger on the trigger, right in my face and then lifts it up and shoots it. It's not super cool. Woo. Cruising out of the Cordillera Wild Wash right now. Been chased out by rainstorms as usual. But uh, super stoked guys brought some beer and didn't tell me. Slammed some nice new Belgiums. Now we're cruising on our way. Definitely a little bit tipsy. We're up here in altitude. In the end, we didn't quite make it as far as we had hoped. Only three quarters of the loop in seven days. Between rainstorms, concussions, and waving guns, the Wiwash had ripped at our eager ambitions. Adventure of this kind can't be scripted nor planned, and for that, we are grateful. A sense of wonder was fulfilled, an understanding of distance and height learned, and the friendship of three adventure-loving friends reinforced. We can't wait for what's next. Mm -hmm.